Hey, it's Neil Parfit here. So far we've been talking about the Big Mac because I'm a McDonald's professional, but let's talk about smaller systems. Something fully capable that you could do albums, film scores, everything in between, and maybe it will fit in the trunk of my Mini. So you can see there's not a lot of space in here. Gas tank, a bag of cassettes, and the studio is right here. Obviously we have a laptop of some sort and then a mysterious box. What is in the box? And no, it's not Gwyneth Paltrow's head. It is a bunch of other things to outfit our little micro studio to get the most out of it. So I'm gonna bring this all back to the kitchen and let's take a look. So we've come full circle. We're actually at my house again where I first did the unboxing of the Mac Pro. And now I'm gonna show you my portable setup. A, it's not all the latest and greatest because B, you don't need always the latest and greatest. And C, it's fully capable to do a ton of work. This could be your primary system if you're on a budget or if you just don't have the space for a bigger setup, etc., etc. And my objective when I put this together was I wanted something that was pretty powerful that I could bring with me anywhere if I was traveling for work Obviously with COVID, that's not a thing right now, but I can still throw this in my car and go to a friend's cottage, or I could go to my parents, or I could work out of a hotel room, whatever. It all fits in these two cases. And when we're over the hump with COVID, this is also a system I can bring on a plane. This is carry-on size. This is obviously carry-on size. So it's checking off all those bases. I don't have to put anything under the plane and worry about stuff getting stolen. I can carry this stuff with me at all times, which is really important when you're traveling. And I can leave the bigger suitcase for my clothing and stuff that I'd be bummed if it got lost, but I wouldn't be out a ton of money. So let's take a look and see what's in this mysterious box. Ooh. So let's talk about all the elements we'll need for a portable recording system. So 99% of the time when we're dealing with portable studios, we do need a computer, so that's number one. Number two, we need an audio interface. This allows us to get real world signals from a microphone or an instrument or something like that, digitized and into the computer, and it allows us to play it back so we can hear it through speakers or headphones or something like that. Uh, number three, we need a MIDI controller, and that allows us to play virtual instruments, you know, program in drum sounds, that kind of thing. Uh, number four, we need monitoring. So that could be speakers or headphones. And number five are more ergonomics. Do we need an extra mouse or do we need a full-size keyboard versus like a smaller laptop keyboard? Things like that. Things that will make the setup easier and more functional as you're working. So let's take a look at all these different elements I've put together. And again, this isn't the de facto only way to do it. This is how I chose to do it. And there's tons of variations and different equipment that does the same thing. So I'm just giving you my take on this and maybe it will spawn some ideas for you. And feel free to leave a comment and we can talk about it. So number one, I have a laptop and this is a MacBook Pro from 2019. It is the i9 version. And I bought it right before they came out with a 64 gig of RAM version of this. So this is still great, but it caps out at 32 gigs of RAM. For most of my work, it's okay. But for larger sessions, I would have preferred 32 gigs of RAM or higher. And if you are looking at a laptop like this, it's baked in. So you have to make a decision because you can't add in memory chips later. So if you are going to go with a MacBook Pro, make sure you buy one that has it fully expanded with memory be it 32 gigs or 64. Instead of a MacBook Pro, this could be a PC laptop, this could be a Mac Mini. I just went for something like this because I can use it for my day-to-day, -day, but I can also use it for my work because it's pretty powerful. So um, if you are doing audio work, I'd recommend minimum i7 CPUs, but uh, if you can get the i9, and now Apple's gonna have their own silicon, but I haven't looked into that yet, but uh, I'd be weary of diving into that quickly if you're on the audio side, especially with Pro Tools, because it always takes the industry an amount of time to adjust to these new platforms and you don't want to be caught as a public beta tester. You're just going to drive yourself crazy. So if you can find a refurbished previous generation MacBook Pro, if you're on the Apple side, I'd go with this or previous gen Mac Mini, you know, that kind of thing. But of course, do what you want.
This computer only has Thunderbolt 3 ports, and of course you can also use USB-C. There's plenty of interfaces that use this, more legacy interfaces with Thunderbolt 2, there's dongles and stuff like that, so you can still use them. But as always, if you're buying older interfaces, just make sure whatever you get supports the operating system your computer currently has, otherwise you're out of luck. So if you see those Craigslist specials for $100 for an interface, double check compatibility first. So, laptop, and this has like a little shell I bought that was maybe $20 for additional protection so I don't scratch it. And this bag I got off Amazon, what is this? It's a TomTalk. I just like the fact that it had pockets for the charger and some extra stuff, but it's light, the strap feels good and it's sort of fuzzy on the inside, so it keeps this protected, so. All right, let's take a look in the mystery box and see what we have. So this is my audio interface. It's a universal audio arrow. It's very basic. It's uh, two inputs, two outputs, and there's also a DI on the front for plugging in your guitar or bass directly. You have headphones if you're monitoring quietly, and you can use microphones or line level synthesizers and stuff like that on the back. And it's bus power from Thunderbolt 3, so I don't need an extra wall warp power supply. This does have DSP, like the larger Apollo systems, but just a single DSP chip. And this allows me to use some of the plugins from my bigger system on here. Honestly, with how fast computers are, I'd say the DSP element of this is kind of irrelevant, but you can only use their plugins with their DSP hardware. So it's sort of like Avid Pro Tools HDX and the HDXL systems and stuff like that. So at this point in time, I feel like it's just a really smart way to copy protect their plugins because you can only use their plugins with their hardware. And they're actually really, really good. So I'm glad I can use the Lexicon reverb models and stuff like that portably. So this is my audio interface. We also need a MIDI controller. So my MIDI controller is an Akai MPK Mini and it's really tiny. It's a two octave controller. It's a pretty goofy little thing, but it's pretty feature packed for such a small footprint controller. So I have two octaves of mini keys, but it's good enough to realize your ideas and get your performances into the computer. I mean, I can still play this. I prefer larger keys on my big system, obviously, but this works and it fits in this box. So I have two octaves of this. I can octave control those. I have a joystick for changing the pitch bending. Uh, I have eight pads for programming in drum sounds and impact kind of sounds. I have these eight freely assignable encoders that I can use for like filter sweeps or modulation, and they're endless, which is great. So you don't get stuck at the extreme left or the extreme right and trying to wiggle it to get a result. They just work the moment you turn them. So this is pretty cool. And this connects to the computer via regular USB. So this is my MIDI controller. So I'm a little old school. This is a portable Kensington mouse ball. I've been using these for 20 years and I love them. Some people hate them. I just love that my wrist doesn't have to do this as I'm working. I can just like move this ball with my thumb and I can move my mouse and my wrist never hurts. So this is wireless Bluetooth, so no additional cables for this. The biggest issue I find working with laptops is that it's never high enough. You're always sort of crouched over looking. So I did decide to get a laptop stand because it does solve some ergonomic problems. Mainly I wanted the keyboard in front of my laptop, but if I have this in front of my laptop, then my, my laptops push further back. So I bought this laptop stand, it's made by Hercules. I'll put the model in the uh, YouTube video because I forget the exact number, it was a long thing. It was about $120 Canadian, give or take. And it's amazing, it, it folds up into this. And if I just loosen a few bolts here and just snap a few things into place, I just open up these legs like that, pop it on the table, swing this out, and there, I have this laptop stand and I can put my MIDI controller right here. And there we go. I can put this off to the side, wherever I need it to go. And everything is sort of where I want it to be as I'm working. And of course I can adjust the height of this based on the angle and I can angle this. So you're not stuck at one height. You can actually adjust this however you want, depending on the gear you have underneath. I'll just set it like this and move on. So let's talk about monitoring. I do have headphones in the studio as a third reference. I have some travel Bose Bluetooth headphones, but I didn't want to bring studio headphones with me. I really wanted speakers. So I brought speakers with me too. So this is a Genelec 8010A. They're fully active. There's an XLR input on the back 
And for the size, these things sound amazing. So I have a pair of these in the box and these work great. You might be looking at this and saying, well, these are too low to the table. Like speakers are supposed to be near your ear level or at least pointing at your ears. So in the box we go again. So I did get these accessory speaker stands from Genelec. Not the cheapest in the world, but uh, it solves a problem quite elegantly. You can adjust them like this and point your speakers right up towards your ears, which is exactly what we want. And it gets us off the desk, so you're not getting that immediate reflection. And these are both in the box. So here are the two Genelecs on their custom Genelec stands, and they get us closer to our ears, pointing at our ears, and directly off the table. So the only thing left in the box now is just a bunch of cables. So I have a quarter inch TRS to XLR, and that takes the audio output of our interface to our speakers. And then I have two power cables for the speakers that are fairly long. I have my Thunderbolt 3 cable that will go from my computer to the audio interface. And a USB cable that goes from the Akai MIDI controller to my laptop. And I have like a little hub that I'll show you. Actually, there is one more thing. I have this little Bluetooth numeric keypad because sometimes when I'm working in Pro Tools and dealing with a lot of time code numbers, it's way easier to type it on a numeric keypad than just the sacrifice ergonomics of a laptop keyboard versus a full size. So I keep this with me just in case. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my table and show you this setup. Oh yeah, so check that out. This is our complete portable setup for on the go work or as a fully fledged studio at home. I got my MacBook Pro. I have my small pair of Genlex. An Apollo Arrow is my audio interface. I have an Akai MPK MIDI as my MIDI controller. I have my Kensington Wireless Expert Mouse trackball and I have this cheapo numeric keypad here. I did get this little cheap pub on the side here that just clamps onto the side of the MacBook Pro. And on the side, it has a pass-through uh, USB-C as well as three old school USB ports and also an HDMI output. So if I'm set up like this and I'm in a hotel room or something and I was working with digital video, I could just connect the uh, hotel's TV screen as a big picture monitor if I wanted to, and I wouldn't have to rent or buy anything else. I just have to bring an HDMI cable in my suitcase or something. Um, I also have an external T5 here for two terabytes of sound libraries and stuff like that, because my internal drive is only one terabyte. So all my documents and stuff are sitting on here and I have it Velcroed to the top. So it's all just sort of together and simple. The one thing I was critical about with the Mac Pro was shipping with the wireless full-size keyboard. However, it's actually turned out to be very useful because I can just throw up my suitcase if I really need it. And then I don't have to bring this with me. So now I have full-size keyboard and my regular mouse. And this is exactly the same as my full-size setup. So there's no compromise with key commands working on a collapsed laptop keyboard setup. So here you have it. This is my portable system. And all this fits in that silver box and my laptop fits in a laptop bag. So super simple. So that's everything except the full size keyboard packed into this box and my laptop on this side case here with the charger and that little hub in my drives. So this is covering all the bases in a really small footprint. So of course there are considerations when dealing with a portable system versus a desktop or something similar. And obviously this laptop isn't gonna compare in performance to my 28 core Mac Pro. But just because I have all those cores doesn't mean I'm pinning them at 100% all the time. So if you're more on the songwriter side of things, music editing, um, doing mixes, um, like post-production kind of work, a lot of that you can do on your laptop pretty easily. It's only just like really specifics where I start needing my bigger systems juice. Thermals are the main issue on smaller systems because the harder you push them, 
the more the systems heat up and then you have to cool them down. And because they're so thin, it's this little tiny fan, so they become kind of noisy. So if you're a singer songwriter, that would be a primary concern because if you're running these huge sessions, your fan's gonna speed up. So if you're trying to track vocals and you're all in the same space, you obviously don't want your vocals to have laptop fan noise on them. That's a huge problem. So when you're doing stuff like that, usually you just render out your song as sort of like a scratch track record that in a different section, or keep it in the same session and off, offline archive everything else. Why don't I just leave your you and I'll just just stay over here and you can be like, in conclusion, this is what I recommend for portable stuff. Oh, I've already gone through and all that. that. Fuck. Well, cause I was, I was gonna be like, see you later. And then you popped in and then I forgot what I was gonna say. So can you not just say, see you later? She said everything I needed to say. <laughs> you're the one that tells me that you're old all the time. This is the kind of abuse I get. <gasps> As you can see, <laughs> talking about home studios is very exciting. Like how many people do you know that can actually put their entire career on in a backpack or in a laptop bag and actually work that is true. for one week, two weeks, deliver for their clients? Like it's incredible. So what do you think the biggest challenge is when you go from a bigger setup to a small one? Having to play on a non-weighted teeny tiny little MIDI keyboard. So they're goofy, but you can still at least compromise and get your work done. Mm -hmm. You know what we do, what we can with what we have. And what if you were working and there was this googie constantly interrupting you? Well, I think that for a lot of composers that I know and for a lot of engineers that I know, they do have studio cats. Right. Maybe you need to ask your viewers. And aren't studio musicians studio cats themselves? <laughs> Cheers to portable setups. All right. Bye. Oh, this is Jayla. Okay, bye. So in conclusion, cat. <laughs>